Hey folks, uh, Mr. Bullock here, and I hope your studies are going well for your upcoming AP statistics test. Let's go ahead and get started with some more uh, sample multiple choices here. Let x represent a random variable whose distribution is normal with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. So standard deviation of 10 just means, you know, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10 to the right. And so that would get me 110, 120, 130, and then a plus, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. So which of the following is equivalent to... Uh, the probability that your x uh, is greater than 115. Okay, so a picture of that, there's, there's my uh, standard normal curve. And so 115 would be something like that right there. Okay, so when I'm looking at all these, remember it's symmetrical with respect um, uh, to your mean right here because it's a standard normal curve. All right, so, um, so which one is this one? That one is choice C on that one, okay, because those guys are equivalent. All right. Okay, so for each uh, scatter plot below, uh, how does the outlier affect the correlation? Okay, so this, this outlier right here, if I included that, it's going to weaken um, this, um, uh, this linear relationship right here. This one here is going to just, it's going to even, just imagine a line going right up through there. It's going to make it more, more um, uh, increase the correlation. That's the word I was thinking of. So, so this one decreases your correlation, makes it less strong. This one increases your correlation and makes it more strong. Okay. All right. So, use the parallel box plots of gas mileage for the three makes of cars. So, which of the following are true? All three have the same range. Okay. Your range are your small number, your whiskers. So, it's the small number and the big number. So, they do look like they have all three the same range. So, I'm going to say that one's true. All three have the same IQRs. The IQRs, this is my first quartile, this is my median, this is my third quartile right here. Okay, so they don't have the same IQRs because this IQR, this quartile three minus this one, this one looks smaller right here. So I, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay, these two might look alike, but this one looks like it has a smaller IQR. Okay, the inner quartile range, quartile three minus quartile one. Okay, the difference between the difference in the medians between the first, okay, here's the median in the first, and the median in the third uh, is the same as the IQR as the second. Well, that looks true. Doesn't that look like that this median right here is this guy, the quartile three? This median right here is quartile one, and so the IQR is quartile three minus quartile one. So I'm going to say one and three are true. Which one is that? That would be choice B, okay? So I have that, what I just said is right there, okay? All right, so um, uh, using the same figure, so I'm going to use those same uh, box plots right there, which of the following statements are true? All three are symmetrical. Well, let's go take a look at that, okay? Um, uh, this is not symmetrical because uh, symmetrical uh, would mean, see, like right, right here is the median right here. Well, this if this is my middle number, that tells me that most of the numbers are over here and the very few numbers are over here. And since this guy, the quartile is way over here with your um, smallest number over here, this one is skewed to the left. Okay. Similarly, this one is skewed to the right. Let me go back and see the choices here. So, so it says the first is skewed to the left while the third is skewed to the right. That one looks true. Okay. They're not all three symmetrical because they're skewed. Okay. The second is skewed on both sides. There's no such thing as skewed on both sides. In fact, the second looks, let's look at that. The second looks pretty symmetrical. The median is pretty much in the middle between the third quartile and the first quartile. Okay, so it's reasonably symmetrical. So I'm going to say, uh, what am I going to say? Choice B on that. Okay, so what I just said is all that is that blue stuff right there. Okay, suppose the scores of the exam have a mean of 75 with a standard deviation of 8. So remember, if you go minus 8, minus 8, minus 8, that's to the left. Plus 8, plus 8, plus 8 is to the right. So if one student has a test score with a Z score, that says Z score right there. Let me get rid of that. Of a negative 1.5. Okay, so negative 1.5 times that is negative 12. So if I take 12 off of that, that's going to be 63. So they got a 63. And another student has a, a z-score of 2.0. So I'm going to add 2 times 16, or 2 times 8, which is 16 to that, which is 91. So how many points higher was the, uh, was the second student than the first students? Okay, so it's just 91 minus 63. So I think that's 28 right there, I think. Okay, yeah, 28. Okay, all right, so choice E. Okay, so a simple random sample of size N is selected in such a way. Okay, if the simple random sample of size N is selected, that just means all the sample sizes with size N have the exact same chance of being selected. So all sample sizes with size N. Which one is that? 
All sample, this choice C. All sample sizes of size N have the same chance of being selected. That's what that means, you guys. Okay? All right. In the sample surveys, bias can be, can be controlled by the following except, okay, so we want to get rid of bias. So using probability or chance in sampling production or pr sampling procedure. Yeah, that gets rid of bias. The more probability and chance of uh, when you're doing this uh, gets rid of bias. The wording of the questions so they're not confusing or misleading. Well, that will also get rid of bias. Careful training and supervising uh, interviewers. Well, that would also get rid of bias. Prompting respondents so they give the correct answer. Well, that's total bias. That increases your bias, and we want to get rid of it. So we want we don't want D, so it's choice D. Reducing non-response and under coverage, yeah, that would also get rid of bias. So it's choice D on that one, okay? All right, suppose you wish to compare the average height of math and science teachers to the average height of English and social science teachers at here at, and I'm at Del Campo High School. Which is the most appropriate technique for gathering the, uh, the needed data? Okay, census would be to go collect everybody's information. Sample survey would be just go get a sample survey. Just do a sample of the science and, you know, that one wouldn't be it. You know, it's this one, it's census. Since you're just dealing with the high school, we have probably... 14 math teachers and probably 8 science teachers and probably similar to that. It would just be better just to get a census. When it's, um, when it's a small number, census is, census is the best uh, choice on that. So that's choice A. Okay, just go ahead and check with all the teachers. All right, so consider n pairs of numbers such uh, and suppose that uh, the mean of the x's is 4, the standard deviation of the x's is 3, the mean of the y's is 2, and the standard deviations of the y's is 5. Of the following, which could be the least square regression line? All right, well, first of all, you guys, your least square regression line always goes through the, the mean of the x's and the mean of the y's. So it's going through 4, 2. I know that. Okay, so first of all, if you didn't know anything else, which one of these equations satisfies 4, 2? Okay, I don't know. I, I know one of them does. Okay, so that's what that says. And then the other thing is to fine tune it just a little bit more. If I plugged in 4, 2 right here, where um, uh, 2 was y, and then so it's not a because 4, 2 doesn't satisfy that. If I plugged in 4 right here and 2 right there, let's see, does it work on that? If I plugged in 4, 2, so that'll eliminate some of the choices, if not most of them right there. This will fine-tune it even better. Your slope of your line is always your correlation, remember that's R, that's your correlation, uh, times your standard deviation of the X's over the Y's, okay? And then, uh, so it's going to be whatever my correlation is times five-thirds because the um, uh, standard deviation of the Y's is five, standard deviation of the X's is, is three, okay? And then also, you guys, your correlation is a number that's somewhere between negative one and positive one. So that is restricting this. If I plugged in negative one there, that would be my lower boundary and my upper boundary. So my slope has to be somewhere between negative five-thirds, which is negative one and two-thirds. That gets rid of that guy right there. That gets rid of that guy. That gets rid of, uh, um, and so uh, the only one that's going to satisfy this is, is this guy right here. It's choice E. That's the only one. Okay. All right. Uh, a member of Congress wants to know uh, what her constituents uh, think of, of a proposed legislation on health insurance. Her staff reports that 228 letters have been received on the subject, of which 193 oppose the legislation. Uh, what is the population of this legislation? Okay, the population is uh, it's the entire group of the individuals that you want information about. So what do we want information about? We want information about, uh, about her constituents. So this would be the whole population. It would be choice A. All right, what else do I have? Okay. So the following is a histogram of test scores. Which of the following are true statements? Okay, the median, which is the middle number, is 75. Let's see. Well, let's see. Here's 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the median would be the seventh number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The median is somewhere here. So the median score is not 75. Okay. If 90 and above was an A, most three students received an A. Received an A. Well, the deception is, is that um, uh, most students didn't receive an A. Most student, students received something other than an A. Look, there's one, two, three, four, five students that received A's, but there's eight students that didn't receive A's. So it's not this one, okay? 
More students scored below 70 than above 90. Okay, more students scored below 70. Well, only four students here. And five students scored above 90 right there. So it's not that one either. So none of those guys are going to be true. All right? All right, take care, you guys.